Okay, um, question number 10, part A. This is a question that I've had many requests to answer, so I'm going to go through this from the beginning to the end. Okay, now, in this question, we're told that we have a regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F of sides 10 centimeters. So the sides of this, of this hexagon are 10 centimeters. Okay, that's 10 centimeters there. All of them are the same. It's a regular hexagon. Regular means that all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same. Okay? Um, they told us to show that BAF, angle BAF, which is this angle over here, is equal to 120 degrees. Let's show that angle BAF equals 120 degrees. Now, basically, BAF is one interior angle in a regular hexagon. And there are two ways we could go about this. One way is if we know the formula for the sum of the interior angles in a regular hexagon. It's always 180 times n minus 2. 180 times 2 less than the number of sides always. Okay, so you're going to have 180 times, and you've got 6 sides, minus 2. Okay, that's 180 times 4. Okay, that's the sum of all of the angles in this triangle. That's going to be 400, that's going to be 720. 400 plus 320, okay, 720, and that's the sum of all of them, and as they're all equal, you can just divide that by the six angles that we have, and that should give you 120 degrees. That's one way of doing it, but I much prefer another way. I much prefer when I'm dealing with regular uh, polygons to deal with the interior, um, with the exterior angles, sorry, with the exterior angles. So I much prefer to do the following, to make the exterior angle here. Now I know that the exterior angle in any polygon, no matter how many sides it has, whether it has three sides or whether it has a million sides, the sum of all the exterior angles will always be 360 degrees. Okay, so if I find the size of this angle here, okay, I know that there are six angles, six Interior angle, six interior angles. So the, the sum of those six angles is going to be 360. So I do 360 divided by six. That will be the sum, that will be uh, the size of one exterior angle. Okay, so that would be the size of this angle here. That's going to be 360 divided by six is 60. Okay, so that angle is 60. So the interior angle is going to be 180 minus that because the interior and exterior angle make a straight line. So it's 180 minus. 60, which is 120. Okay, I always like to deal with exterior angles rather than interior angles when I'm dealing with a regular um, polygon. Okay, so that's part one. Now, part two. It says the vertices of a rectangle PQRS uh, touches the sides FA, AB, CD, and DE. PS is parallel to FE, and AP is equal to X centimeters. Use trigonometry to find the length of PQ in terms of X. In terms of X. Okay, so now, what we know is AP is equal to X. Okay, we also know that AF is equal to 10. The whole length from there to there is equal to 10. It's the same hexagon. So this part here is 10 minus x. All right. So that's x. Now, it had told us that this line is parallel to that line. Okay. And if I know that this angle is 120, because they're all are 120 in this, okay, all the interior angles are 120, then this angle must be 60, because they are interior angles. Right? Okay, so if I draw a line across, because our, our objective now is to find PQ. I'm going to call that Y. In terms of X. Okay, all right, now, I know that's 60 degrees. I know that's 90 degrees. How do I know it's 90 degrees? Because it says a rectangle. All right, and this is a straight line, so this angle must be 30 degrees. This angle there must be 30 degrees. I know this is 120 degrees, 
Okay, I know this is 30 degrees for sure. So this angle must also be 30 degrees because I have to add up to 180. So for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, this must be an isosceles triangle. It must be an isosceles triangle. Okay, because this is definitely 60. This is definitely 90. This is definitely 30. This is definitely 120. Right? There's no doubt about any of those. And if that's 30 and that's 120, that must be 30 degrees. And if that's 30 and that's 30, it's definitely an isosceles triangle. I'm not assuming it. I know that for sure. Okay? So here we have an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to draw the isosceles triangle. Okay, I'm going to draw the isosceles triangle so it's a bit clearer. It's a bit unclear from that diagram. Draw something that looks like a bit like that. It's not accurate. It's just a sketch. Um, you have A, and you have P, and you have Q. Okay, so we know that this angle is 120. Okay, so what, this angle, this side is called X, and this side is called X, and this side is called Y. That's what I have to find in terms of X. So I can do this in, uh, in a number of ways. One way I could do it is using the cosine rule. Another way I could do it, as is isosceles, as this side is the same as that, is I could split this into two triangles which are um, exactly the same. Okay, I could do that if I wanted to. All right, so I could do this. I could make a line from there to there and cut it into two triangles. And I know that this angle is 60 degrees. This is a right angle. This is X. So I can say that the length over here, okay, let me call it Y over 2, right? It's half of Y. So I can say that, for example, the sine, the sine of 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it's like Y over 2 over X. Okay, Y over 2 over X, which is like Y over 2X. Right? So now I can say sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. If you can work out the sine of 60, in case you don't believe me, this is something that when you do math later on in life, you'll realize But certain angles you can, you know their values. So the sine of 60 degrees, okay, is equal to root 3 over 2. It's this exact value. I'm not going to write it in its, in its um, rounded value because I want to um, keep my answers as neat as possible. So you've got y over 2x is equal to root 3 over 2. So y is equal to 2x times root 3 over 2. The 2's cancel. So it's like x times the square root of 3. Now I will write my answer because it doesn't say giving in exact form or in square root form or anything. So of course we, sh we, we are supposed to round our answers okay, to three significant figures if nothing else is mentioned. So it's going to be root 3 times x. So root 3 is, its value is 1.732. So I'll write 1.73 times x as my answer. So pq is 1.73x. Okay? Now, they've told us here pf is equal to 10 minus x. Well, we wrote that down anyway. Of course, it's 10 minus x because that's 10 and that's x. So it's 10 minus x. It says, show that PS equals 20 minus X. So now we've got to show that P to S is 20 minus X. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take from the question It doesn't work. Yet. All right. No, I can't do that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Okay. So I'll go back to here and I'll cross off all this stuff that I've written earlier. You, you don't need that now. We just that was just to prove that well, that was an isosceles triangle. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I am going to show you that um, you've got to show that PS equals 20 minus x. Okay. So I'm going to zoom into this thing. Let me zoom in a bit so we can see a bit clearer. 
Okay, let's go off the page for you. So click here. Okay, so they've told us that PF equals 20 minus X. All right, this is 20 minus X. Sorry, 10 minus X. This is X, and this is 10 minus X. Okay, and we've got to show that PS is equal to 20 plus X. Or 20, was it 20 minus X? We've got to show that PS is equal to 20 minus X. Okay, so now. Okay, so now. What we'll do is we'll draw a line from here to here. Oops. <clears throat> Well, the guys, that sound you can hear in the background is Mr. Safra, famous in Moscow. Now, he's, he's going to become a star. Okay, so we have here a line. I'm going to draw a line from here to here. And I'm going to draw a line from here to here. All right? Okay, now, I know that this length here, for sure, is 10. Right? That's 10, because it's a regular hexagon, so all the sides, FE and AF and AB and BC, they're all the same. So that means this length is 10. Now, the length from the, this little part here, the up to there it's 10, from there to there is 10. Okay? So this part here, um, let me call it Z. And this is also Z, right? So they're exactly the same, it's like symmetric. So I need to find what this length Z is. Now, what do I know? Okay, I know that these two, no, I don't know the identical, that's one. They're not identical. What I know is the following. I know that that's 10 minus x, I know that that's 90 degrees, I know that that is, that's the same as a half of that, that's 60 degrees for sure, because if I draw a line across from there to there, it's going to be parallel to that line, so that's 60 and that's 60, okay, so that's 60 degrees. So I can find what z is in terms of x by using trigonometry. I have a, a right angle triangle that looks like this, okay, this is right angle, this is 60 degrees. Okay, one second. I'm just going to pause the video and just tell somebody to keep their voice. Okay, so here we have a right angle triangle. Okay, and in this right angle triangle, <coughs> we have an angle of 60 degrees. You can use the other angle, which is 90 as well, but you can use this 60 degrees here. That's fine. There's no problem with that. So we have an angle here which is 60. Okay. Um, we, we also know that this side is 10 minus x. Now what I'm interested in is finding this side that we've called z over here. That's what I'm interested in finding. And I can do that in terms of x by using trigonometry. Okay. I know that z is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. So I can say the cosine of 60 the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to z divided by 10 minus x. Now the cosine of 60 is equal to a half, which, if you don't believe me, cosine, yeah, cosine 60 equals a half. Right? So that's um, a half, so we can now say that a half is equal to z over 10 minus x, and then I can move on from there. I can then multiply both sides, I can do cross multiplication basically. I can say z is equal to a half times, I say z is equal to a half times 10 minus x. In fact, even better than that, because I, I want to find 2z. Even better than that, I can just 
straight away why isn't it working my reason? Even better than that, I can just say I'm trying to find two z, isn't it? Because I need this z and this z. I can just straight away say that if I cross multiply, I can say um, 10 minus x, okay, is equal to 2z, right? So now I have to add that's this plus this is 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 equal to um, 10 minus x. So the total length from p to s, p to s, I'll write it here, is equal to 2z. 2z plus 10, right? You've got 2z plus 10. z plus z plus 10. And so p to s is equal to 2z, which is 10 minus x. 10 minus x plus 10. So p to s, or p s, is equal to 20 minus x, as we were required to show. Okay, so I'll stop the video there and go to the next part in the next video.